welcome to the Reconnection Club podcast, the show that helps parents heal troubled relationships with their adult sons and daughters. I'm your host, psychotherapist Tina Gilbertson. Each week, I'll offer you compassion, clarity, and personal development tips designed to help you reconnect, not only with your child, but with yourself. Now let's get started. During a recent consultation, the mother of a semi-estranged adult daughter told me that her daughter blows hot and cold, and it was driving her nuts. Sometimes, the daughter sends warm wishes and loving thoughts by text. But other times, this same adult child doesn't respond at all, or sends a response that seems cold or even rude, which leaves the mom feeling frozen out all over again, and reminded that Deep down, they're still estranged. This mom told me that she's been increasingly hurt and confused by her daughter's behavior, and she was finding it difficult to trust her anymore. She didn't know what to do to end this cycle, where she feels pulled closer and then pushed away again. It was getting intolerable. It is hard for any of us to take that kind of come-closer-now-go-away behavior especially from someone important to us. But throwing up our hands and thinking the person is just crazy is not the answer. And this mom knew that, and so she was looking for a strategy to try to deal with it better. An effective response to this kind of back-and-forth behavior is to closely examine not just the behavior itself, but the context in which it occurs and see if you can discern any sort of pattern, because it's often there if you look. Too often, when I'm talking to anyone about any sort of a problem in a relationship, the context gets ignored, and they focus entirely on the details of what happened. And I do this myself. It's like we're programmed to focus on behavior instead of the context in which it happens. But Context is extremely important in understanding why people do what they do and being able to address anything that needs to be addressed. For example, if you see someone crying their eyes out, what does that mean? Should you express sympathy? Well, it depends. Are they at a funeral? Or are they at the lottery office picking up a huge check that will change their lives forever? Context, in this case, is really everything. This particular daughter, for various reasons, probably had some ambivalence about how close she wanted to be in the first place. That's almost certainly at least part of the picture here. But in looking more closely at the patterns of pushing and pulling that her child was engaging in, the mom realized that the behavior was not entirely arbitrary, the way it seemed to be at the time. For example, the daughter was never rude, but was always loving when initiating contact with the mom. It was only when the mom reached out first that she sometimes got the cold shoulder. This child wanted to control the pace of their relationship, and in fact had said that in different ways a number of times. The hot and cold behavior was totally consistent given that context. The message was clear. I enjoy contacting you, but please don't contact me unless I do. The cold response to the mom's communications indicated that the mom had unwittingly violated her daughter's need to control the rhythm and pace of contact. Now, we're not talking about whether it's reasonable for your child to want this kind of total control. We're just talking today about how to make sense of her behavior. And if you understand that the daughter wants to be able to reach out toward mom, but not feel obligated when mom reaches out to her, the chilly responses make a lot more sense. Also, in this particular case, the mom and the daughter had recently gotten together for a meal, which the mom said went well, but she felt rejected by her daughter immediately afterwards. She was struggling to make sense of this, since getting together had felt like a step in the right direction, 
She thought they were moving toward greater closeness, and she was eager to keep that ball rolling. So why did the daughter put on the brakes? It didn't seem to make sense. It was only when we got into the details of what happened during the meal that the mom remembered a tense exchange that they'd had, an exchange in which the daughter clearly got upset. From the mom's point of view, the tension blew over long before they parted. But if the exchange bothered the daughter, especially if it touched on some ongoing things that bother her about the relationship, then the meeting was not an unmitigated success, and the daughter may have needed time to go away and process it for a while afterwards. Always assume there are reasons for your child's behavior, and it's not that they want to hurt you. If you're not convinced that your child isn't trying to hurt you with their rejecting behaviors, please listen to episode 27. Uh, Estrangement hurts, but not on purpose is what it's called. In that episode, I talk about Hanlon's razor, which is another way to view people's behavior. Episode 27. Anyway, this daughter whose mom I was talking to just seems to need to control the pace of contact between them. And that's true for a lot of semi-estranged adult children. I always say, think of your semi-estranged adult child as a deer that wanders into your backyard. You can enjoy them from inside the house, but if you go out and try to approach them, they typically get scared and they run away. So you have to be patient and maybe put out some delicious plants for them to nibble on. With your child, those would be goodies in the form of emotional treats like respect, empathy, validation, and then just Wait for them to come to you and enjoy them when they're there. That's easier said than done, I know, especially if you miss your child terribly. And you know what? There's no cure for missing your child when you're estranged. But there is a cure for confusion and helplessness. And that is understanding that there are always reasons for your child's behavior, or assuming that there are. If you assume that your child is trying to hurt you or that there's no rhyme or reason to their actions, you're putting yourself in a terrible position, a position in which you're confused and resentful instead of being able to be your most understanding, empathetic, and purposeful self in dealing with your child. So give yourself the gift of assuming that your child's behavior makes sense to him or her, and that once you understand the context for it, it will make sense to you as well. Until next time, remember that you are a loving, lovable, and still growing human being. So please take good care of yourself. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Reconnection Club podcast, I invite you to check out ReconnectionClub.com. The Reconnection Club is for parents at any stage of estrangement from their adult, child, or children. So whether you've just realized there's trouble between you, you've been living with estrangement for years, or you're newly reconciled but still walking on eggshells, the Reconnection Club is your essential resource for information, support, and continued personal growth. With our courses and workshops, expert interviews, monthly Q&A calls, and a friendly, active community, the Reconnection Club is a wonderful place to be for anyone suffering the pain of estrangement from an adult child or children. So check it out at reconnectionclub.com.